All right, here we get started with day six of our kitchen remodel projects. Uh, here we're just starting out uh, putting down some drop cloths so we don't get a bunch of debris on the uh, tile and the grout that we set uh, that Neil set the night before. Uh, we still don't want to get fine uh, sheetrock dust in the grout because uh, if it gets in there, it can dry in there and uh, make a mess of things. So we want to keep everything clean. Uh, here you see Neil uh, working on the windowsill. So um, we're going to uh, create a new backsplash in this whole area. Um, there's going to be upper cabinets and a level of cabinets even above there. And the whole area around here is going to be framed out with uh, a new backsplash and uh, some granite, some custom cut granite tiles. So uh, Neil's just removing uh, the final pieces of the existing backsplash um, and uh, just cleaning up the area around the window trim so we'll have a nice good surface to work on once we begin with uh, with the tiling on this wall uh, and here you see him just cleaning up a bunch of the the joints of the drywall and uh, just generally prepping for a later stage uh, process here so I think I've been off uh, I ran out to uh, Lowe's at the beginning of this morning or Home Depot and then Lowe's and I bought this uh, this vacuum attachment for a drywall sander. So I looked into this before and I never got one. I'm really glad I got this. Um, it definitely helps a lot. Um, anyone who's done much drywall sanding knows it's uh, horribly gross stuff. Um, it creates this super fine dust uh, that's it's horrible for your lungs and uh, you definitely want a respirator even with uh, the drywall sanding vacuum attachment. But I'd say that vacuum attachment probably uh, sucks up about 80% of the uh, drywall dust uh, right at the point of sanding it. So I was really happy I got that. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. It was like a $20 attachment for my uh, shop vac and I ended up using it a bunch. Uh, there uh, Neil had a sign. I think it said uh, uh, don't forget to put insulation in or uh, don't forget something. Don't forget the water line. But uh, was a good note. Um, so here I'm just uh, working on some drywalling. Um, Neil's off I believe in the beginning of this morning. Um, we're also remodeling the flooring in a bathroom at the other end of the house. Uh, so he's working on tiling that uh, that bathroom here uh, while I work on some of the projects in the kitchen here. So um, I'm here. Um, we realized we didn't have any insulation too in any of these walls before so I wanted to install some new insulation that I got uh, just down at Home Depot. Uh, so here I'm just uh, cutting sheetrock uh, and making adjustments, fine-tuning it, and uh, here uh, drilling in the sheetrocking screws um, and just trying to fill in all these uh, sections that need filling in um, so I can start uh, mudding, uh, taping and mudding this area and so we can prep um, so the next day we can actually get to uh, installing cabinets. Um, so here you see I'm just going through and uh, got my bucket of mud uh, joint compound here and uh, some taping knives and some some random tools and I'm, I'm just trying to uh, uh, both smooth out some of the inconsistencies on this existing wall and then also um, you know mud these sections here uh, uh, to create a nice a nice good consistent wall um, that we can add uh, door trim pieces to later. And here, oh, I was just uh, reinforcing the uh, the inner trim for the door, uh, adding a couple extra screws in just to make sure it was really solidly solidly in there. Um, here, I'm just going through again with an extra layer of mud around here. Uh, there was a bit of an inconsistency as far as uh, the actual width of the uh, door, the inner door trim, and the walls um, that were all around it. So I really needed to even that out so when I went to attach uh, the door trim later uh, the mitered door trim uh, it wouldn't be uh, off kilter at an angle or I wouldn't have to fill in huge gaps with caulking or mud um, so here I'm just uh, progressing on to the next section I'm going to uh, try to get this whole wall drywalled by the end of the day uh, I think Neil comes in in a little bit and uh, helps me finish it up uh, but here just using a box cutter to cut out the sections. I uh, have to do some measuring um, to figure out where these electrical boxes are going to fall and uh, make the appropriate cuts here. 
So I just got a straight edge and tools. I think this one uh, had to make a few adjustments to it. Shaving off a little bit at a time, but you want a nice, uh, a nice solid fit, a nice tight fit. So usually better to uh, to cut off a little less and then uh, check it and then cut more if you need to, just so you have a nice solid fit. You don't have to fill in big gaps with uh, joint compound later. So here I'm just screwing this section in. I've got the uh, cutout for the electric box there. And uh, I'm just taping, taping this edge here, taping and mudding. So I'm just trying to get uh, as much of this uh, mudded and dried so we can sand as quick as possible and uh, really be ready to move on to cabinets. So uh, that's why I'm sort of mudding as I'm going. I just want it to dry as quick as possible. So if I need to uh, uh, add additional layer um, or sand down and add more, uh, it'll that process will go. A lot of it's uh, sort of order of operations. And you have to get, uh, you know, with uh, drywalling and mudding often, you have to do a full a couple takes of uh, of mudding, waiting for it to dry, sanding it, and then mudding it more, sanding it again until you get um, a really smooth, consistent surface between uh, pieces of sheetrock. And so here, uh, Neil's helping out now with uh, getting the insulation in the wall here. I'm just measuring out the next section. Um, this section um, is where all of the plumbing comes through. So I think I cut out a, uh, a larger section here in this initial take and then uh, later on I'll, I'll go ahead and um, do a finer cut uh, for the exact plumbing parts. So this is the, the larger box I'm cutting out that will provide room for uh, we have four different plumbing lines that we're using. Um, we decided to go ahead and have the hot and the cold of the sink uh, plus the reverse osmosis uh, water filter and the dishwasher are all on uh, separate lines. Um, so we can turn on and off each one independently and then plus the drain line and the garbage disposal electric uh, comes through right there. So here we've got the sheetrock going in. Uh, we got this in pretty quick. Oh, I do remember we did forget to uh, mark and cut out where the <laughs> the gas line comes out for um, for the stovetop, uh, which we, we find out later and we have to go back and make a cut out of this sheetrock. Uh, fortunately, because we had all this uh, GoPro time-lapse footage going, it was easy to just look at the, the footage and figure out exactly where we needed to make the cut later on. So uh, this, this time-lapse actually serves an, an extra good purpose for us. We actually used it a couple times in the project where uh, we couldn't remember exactly uh, we, you know, what we had or where exactly things were, and uh, we were able to, to look back and figure that out uh, based on the time-lapse footage and the photos. So here I'm just making uh, you know the cuts for the electric here, moving right along. We've got pretty much this wall uh, sealed up now with all the electric cuts. Neil's uh, securing this in place and uh, moving on to uh, mudding all this, taping and mudding. And you can see it's getting dark now, so it must be I think around seven o'clock or so. doing this project in uh, March of 2015 out in Woodland Hills, California. Alright, so now we've got the walls pretty much uh, sealed up so we'll be able to move on to uh, cabinets the next day, installing the cabinets, which we've been uh, eagerly awaiting getting that going. Um, here you see I'm uh, mudding the soffit box, uh, at least the first layer of it. Uh, we have the sheetrock in and we have the edge rails uh, we installed uh, an earlier day. So now I'm just going through and uh, starting the process of mudding this and uh, Neil comes in here and helps me out too. Uh, here he is uh, taping this edge and uh, adding a second coat and smoothing as, as we go. So we really wanted to get this, uh, this stuff out of the way. The, the drywall stuff is really the dirtiest part of the job uh, moving forward. You know, after the demolition, uh, the drywall is the next dirtiest thing as far as creating uh, 
of mess and you know for fine dust uh, that you really don't want to have have around so we're trying to finish up as much of the dirty work as possible uh, so when we start moving into putting down cabinets or continuing on with tiling and grouting uh, we're not gonna have to deal with uh, a big mess so here I'm just uh, working on the bracket for the uh, island range hood I wanted to make sure we could get the next uh, next part of it blocked out and we get to the screws here you see we just put up this uh, stainless uh, exterior for the range hood uh, here you see oh I'm going back over this wall on the right this is where the uh, the TV that I'm planning to add is going to be so um, I've, I've marked out or I've, I've written down exactly where this uh, box needs to be I know I have uh, electrical HDMI and Ethernet uh, right behind there so I just cut out that little box uh, area um, so I could uh, connect the TV up over there and here you see I'm just continuing on with the mud uh, the joint compound uh, trying to smooth this whole area out and enjoying all of our new light in our kitchen from these two recessed lights so you see we uh, this plastic we put up at the doors uh, you know we every day we basically uh, tried to do as much mitigation as we could to reduce the amount of dust going into the rest of the house and even with having uh, the plastic wrap up on all the openings and entrances um, and having the shop vac running uh, constantly after each part of the project uh, you still end up getting a bunch of you know dust in the uh, other area of the house um, we had a bunch in the living room and you know a little film on the couches and stuff so uh, but yeah, if we hadn't have done that, it would have been a complete disaster in the house. So whenever you do a kitchen remodel project, you got to uh, try to do as much prep work as possible to mitigate the, uh, the amount of mess you're going to make in the rest of the house. And you can see these plastic wraps. We ended up putting them up and taking them down several times during the project whenever we needed to, to get access. Oh, there we go. Trying to a slow motion camera move and time lapse that goes by very quick. So that was about it for day six. I think it's probably uh, 10 o'clock at night here or so. On day seven, uh, we move on to installing the cabinets. So uh, check out that video.